Zz Mo show. I haven't been here for a while. Actually, we're on a new set today. This is the I guess this is the new look for the Zz Mo show. Um, and today I am here with No Clark. Um, and I know already what people are probably going to think. Or oh. oh, Zz, you always want to do these interviews. You always have to. You love it. Bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. But I think for me, the reason why I felt that this interview was important is not whether I think somebody has done something or not. It's to have a conversation about how somebody can basically work for 20 years, build a career, and then within 24 hours, it's ripped from them with, with no proper investigation, no actual due diligence done, no thorough. It was just an article written by The Guardian and that's it. And for me as a human being, I think we have to take out male, female. This can happen to anybody as a person. And I think for me, that is what is quite worrying. And that's not me saying that women are lying or whatever. I need people to understand that this is me coming from a place in the middle to understand how this happens and why this happens. So, no, Hi. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the million dollar question. I mean, I've had better years, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm all right. So this, this all happened Two years ago now. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, and basically, what happened was there was a article written by the Guardian mm -hmm. where it said that twenty women mm -hmm. had come forward to say that you accused of groping, mm -hmm. uh, sexual harassment, mm -hmm. inappropriate behaviour. Yep. Um, and these women came forward to speak to the uh, the Guardian, and from there you basically lost everything. Yeah. Now, my thing is, which I think everyone thinks is, I think sometimes if it's like one or two, people can be like, mm, dismiss it. Yeah. That's a bit, maybe sometimes even three, four, you might be like, yeah. okay, maybe. But 20 is a lot of women yeah. to come forward mm -hmm. and to all kind of have the same kind of story or the well, same. They're, well, they're not all the same story. Well, in the same group. As in, like, inappropriate behaviour, mm -hmm. the groping, mm -hmm. whatever. It's all to do with, basically, you not carrying yourself in the correct way. In they, a certain, manner. In a certain yeah. manner that they didn't yeah. like. So, 20 women. Mm -hmm. Do you understand why it's hard for people to be like, how can 20 women all be lying? Of course, yeah. I've, I understand completely how people can, can see that. And I've never, I've never turned around and said 20 people were lying. The reason I denied everything is because I think a lot of them are lying, or I know a lot of them are lying, and then there's a lot of things that are out of context. There's a lot of things that were conversations that people were involved with and are now acting like they weren't involved in those conversations. There's a lot of situations that were, I say, mutual, what's the, the, the filthy word we can't say now, mutual banter or jokes, and now people are acting like they weren't. So I'm not gonna turn around and say, well, yeah, I've done this and done that if I've not done it. It would be easier for me to sit here and cry as easy mm -hmm. and be like, I did all these things, I'm, I'm repenting, I'm sorry, I've worked on myself. And you know what? I have worked on myself. I have worked on myself because at the end of the day, when those things sort of come out, you have to look at, you have to look at yourself and go, right, was I, was I making people feel like that? Boy, I didn't know, I need to go work on myself. So I have worked on myself. Of course, if I didn't look like me, I could have worked on myself for a month in the Priory and I'd have been back on television already. But when you look like me, it's a little bit of a different story. So two years later, here I am. But I've worked on myself. But the point is that I was making, it's like, I can't just sit here and be like, yes, this happened and that happened. If it didn't happen, it would be easier for me to just cry and say it happened. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So do you feel, though, that you did anything wrong? Do you feel like at any point your behaviour was a little bit questionable for those women to come forward and say, this is how I felt. Because in my opinion, and I've said this before, I, when it all came out, I, I, had a, I had a live show actually that week, right? Mm. And I said, 20 women is a lot, so yeah. there must be some truth in it. Yeah. There has, there's no smoke, you know, there's no smoke without fire. What if there's no fire though? But there has to be some, like, in my opinion, like, I feel like the way... I carry myself, but then again, again, someone could say that it's inappropriate, but then I would look at myself and be like, oh, maybe when I said this to her, it made her feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Do you feel like when you've looked back, when you look back, is there anything where you think, actually, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe that was a little bit 
I put my hands up. I think there's moments, I think there's moments where I can look back and say, well, do you know what? Maybe I spoke a bit harsh. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I spoke a bit harsh. Or maybe I shouldn't have been involved in that joke. I shouldn't have been involved in those conversations. But not in the way that it was painted. Not in that predatory, like, I'm after women, I'm doing all this kind of, that's just not me. I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even, like, I don't go out. I wasn't even, in terms of the, the people I know and the actors or actresses and stuff that I know, I wouldn't even make the top 100. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even a, 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 a batty grabber. I wasn't even one of those guys. To, to be called a groper, like, baffled my head because I wasn't even one of those guys that would hug girls and, like, touch their bum or anything like I wasn't even doing that. So f for this to really hit me like that, it was like, well, hold on a second. And seeing it, seeing it and being able to go, well, hold on, I know that didn't happen. And I, that, well, hold on, that wasn't like that. But you can't talk. When they do this to you, you can't talk, right? So in answer to your question, yes, there are conversations that I've been involved with and jokes that I was involved with and, and chats that I was involved with that would cross the line of inappropriateness. But I was involved in those conversations. I wasn't instigating. I wasn't sort of taking it to the point where everybody else was like, oh, why are you doing that? Do you know what I mean? I thought I was just doing what everybody else was doing. Not because I'm a sheep, I'm not. And in terms of talking, because not, not all of this is even sexual. Some of it's, half of it is, yeah, is bullying, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of that stuff as well, I can, I'm, a very, I'm a very straightforward person. So I, if I can look back and say, you know what? There's moments where I've probably spoke to people that in a way that people might find a bit too harsh, I can go, yeah, maybe. But you know, when you are, when you're under pressure and everything is on your sh shoulders and if anything goes wrong on, 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 on this, this project or this thing, or no one's looking at anybody else, it's looking at you. Sometimes you want things done the way you want them done and you want them done when you want them done. And that can come across at times as intimidating or that can come across at times as why is he talking to a man like that? Do you think you're do you think you're likable? No. And I think unfortunately that has probably played a part 100%. into the way people see you because I would say whenever I've kind of seen you out, I don't I, well, I when, don't, have, I don't, when look, have you seen me out? I've seen you out enough. Not I haven't seen you out bare, but I've seen you out a few times and I would say you're, you're not I challenge that. Well, you can. Because I don't go out. Yeah, but I've seen you at events. I, I know for sure, whether it was five, ten years ago, where I've seen you places. You know, I saw you out a couple of times and, and I did say to you... But I challenged I, it then as well, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, and I did, but I still said, I never got warmth from you. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're a warm character. And I, <laughs> being honest, I don't think you're a warm character. And I think, unfortunately, yeah. that is what has also played a part into people probably be being like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, well, I don't like no, but I I'm agree. able to... I agree with you. I'm able to say, oh, yeah, when I see Noah, it hasn't been the warmest movie, but I can take myself out of it and be like, that doesn't mean now that he is this character. But do you think that's what's hap uh, uh, that is a part of it? So the things about the bullying... And the uh, people probably have read that and be like, oh yeah, well that was, I, yeah, the vibe I get from I Noah can believe that. Be, I, I believe that. One hundred percent. I'm not. I'm not. Here, here's the interesting thing, and this is very interesting, because people that know me, I'm very warm. I'm very like this sounds crazy. People at home like, ah, oh, this guy, I'm very warm. Like if you, but I don't let anybody in, and so therefore, for ninety five percent of the people I meet. I am standoffish. I'm not, I, didn't, I didn't get into this business. I got into this business to, to work hard, bust my ass and do well. I didn't really come into it to, to make friends. So my mm -hmm. friends are either guys from road when I was young and I wasn't doing that, which I've discussed many times, but I got friends that were, or guys that I met in sixth form college that are still my friends today. I didn't really make many friends in the industry. And that's, that's fact. And even, you know, with all due respect, you said you see me out a few times. I kind of challenged that a little bit because I never went out. I, mean, I never like, well, went out. I'm talking out. about adult, kidhood days when you would have like screenings and all those type of things. You understood. Not, you wouldn't. No, because no, you probably yeah. are like five years old or something well, like that. Well, 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 I, well, I, I mean, I can't. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, like, Who's that girl that, in a pram, man? What's she doing in here? <laughs> no, Where's was, her parents? I was there. I, I understood. Kept the thing. So that's so, what I so, mean, but, yeah. but, but I, I do, I do agree with that. Like people didn't like me, but you know what? I didn't care because I wasn't. I'm not warm to people. You had to. 
you had to know me. But if you don't know me, I'm not trying to be your friend. I'm not a big friend. I'm not, I'm not, I was never starstruck. This is another thing. I was never starstruck. I wouldn't see someone and be like, yo, there's so and so. And I walked in a room, and this is where people go, he's so, he's all, because I, you know, arrogant. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. Arrogant. You know what I mean? He's this and that. I was never starstruck by no one. So I'd walk into a room with the biggest movie stars, and in my mind, I'm like, sure. Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna be there too. That's what I want to work to. That's what I want to work towards. I was never rude to anyone, but like I, when I used to see them fl people around them like flies on shit, I was like, that's not me. And I and you know what would happen by the end of the night? At some point, that big star would come and speak, would to, come and speak to me because they're thinking to themselves, who the fuck is this guy that is not around me? That's how I was. I'm I'm not a warm person. So in terms of that, I think the the vitriol and the reactions afterwards was. I was very disliked and so people couldn't, and when you're disliked and you keep doing well, <laughs> burns people in a different way. How is it, because your production company that you started, yeah. uh, called um, Unstoppable, uh, huh? Ironic, right, listen to the name. Unstoppable, <laughs> Unstoppable Film and Television. Yeah. And you started that with your friend, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, tell me how that, because you, like I said at the beginning, you've been doing this for 20 years, you've been yeah. building your career. You've mentioned, obviously, that you're a black man. Yes. How has that been, building that production company in a predominantly white space? How has that been for you? And also, if I'm being honest, I can, like, again, I can, like I keep saying to people, and I have to keep saying this, I can look at things objectively. Yeah. So I can understand why your demeanour would be like this. Because I think sometimes, even as a black woman, you have to have this hard exterior they'll step on because you. otherwise they step not, on you. you right and they'll then step you on start you. meeting they'll people. take the piss out of you right but how so how has that been for you and do you feel like because of being a black man how far you've come the spaces that you've been able to get into like BAFTA being being a part of BAFTA um having a voice in BAFTA what part do you think that's played in this everything in in this Every, downfall I should say everything because actually what what people don't realize is that I said this in another thing, and, and so someone's going to be like, I've heard this already, but I was fighting battles in wars that people didn't even know exist. Do you understand what I mean? I was making, setting precedents and doing things, not for me, because I'm the one that's hitting the wall, hitting the wall, hitting the wall. And then two years later, someone comes and goes, no, but I want my production company credited. And they go, yeah, you can, you can have that. You know why they can have it? Because right. I did it first and I set a precedent. Do you, do you understand what yeah, I'm that, saying? Off the back of that, do you feel... I don't want to forget your okay, other go question. On, go, go, go. So in terms of your, your question, how was it? It's been a nightmare. It's been, it's been constant barriers. It's been constant battles. It's been constant. And this is where you get bullying and difficult. It's been times where people have gone, yeah, we really want to work with you, but your companies are not getting credited and you're not getting money. But this is going to be mills and we're going to make your show. And the other people like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And me going, no, I'm not doing that. Because you're going to credit my company. And all the other people, like all of them, saying to me, no, bro, we're going to lose the thing. Are you mad? Why you got to be so difficult? Why you got to be so this, that and the other? Why you got to do this? Just take the... Just... And I said, no, because you guys don't understand. Because actually, every time they just go, we'll give you this, and you man are like, yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't learning anything. Don't give me nothing. Let me be there as well and us be given. That's how I've always been. And that's where you get the coldness and that's where you get the thing because I'm just not having it. You ain't, you ain't taking something I've created and then going, yeah, so we know you created it, but we'll take ownership and then you'll still get your credit and this, that and the other. I'm like, no, my company's getting credited as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's who I am. I walk onto sets. I walked onto sets of shows and just went like, Where's all the black people? Well, no, you know, we, no, no. I need some black people on this thing. That's, how, that's what the stuff I used to do. Right. So you think they liked me? Of course they didn't like me. I was difficult for them. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what people, what people, that, what people who don't, don't, don't know me is, that's my demeanor, that's who I was. But actually I was fighting battles that people didn't even know about. Because when you do that, most actors wouldn't even do that. But I got to a point where I'm like, no, I'm, I'm in this show, then there's got to be some people on the crew. Two weeks later, there was a... You know my bulletproof set looked like Wakanda? 
we walked around for two weeks saying Wakanda forever. Everyone was cracking up and then we thought we better chill it down because certain people were getting annoyed. But our thing was so inclusive because that is, that is how, and I'm talking women, I'm talking people of color, that because that is how I was rolling. So when this thing hit me, I was like, apart from the devastation, I was like, huh? How did you feel when you read the article? I can't even describe it. I want to say sick. Sick doesn't describe it. Sick doesn't describe it. It was just, I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, did you know that uh, you must have? So did you know the article was coming out? Yes and no. So what they do is, and and my understanding is, when a paper's done something like this, they'll con they contact you right. and they give you like a couple of weeks to, they go, this is what we got on you. You got two weeks to come back with your things, or we're printing this. Right. Two. Generally, people get two weeks, so a, a week minimum. If they, you know what they gave me, twenty four hours. I wonder why. So when you did your BAFTA speech, because a lot of people, when that came out, there was like a lot of conversation about, oh, he knew it was coming. That's why in his BAFTA speech, he's alluded to certain things and he looked, you, he looked like he was worried. Like all I didn't things. look like I was, I was worried. So, so, you knew, but, so when you accepted that BAFTA, you knew this was coming? Yes and no. Okay, go on. So the newspaper at that point wasn't, the newspaper at that point wasn't a thing, as far as I knew. Okay. It was not a thing as far as I knew. But what I did know was that people had been sending emails. Because how this started was, when I got announced for the award on the 29th, right? The, 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 everyone was positive and this, that and the other. And then uh, of March, 29th of March, it was a Friday. Forget the date, it was a Friday, it was a Friday. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like, oh yeah, you know what? Boy, even people were like, you know what, I don't like man, but he's, he's grafted. Right. On the Monday, Email comes in going, nah, he shouldn't get it. He's, he's a this, he's that, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. So before that, you hadn't heard anything? I've never had a complaint in my life. Right, season. okay. So then when you got the, the nomination was announced and then this happened basically I've, straight after. It's easy. And I, I, wish, I wish we could get all my agents on the phone, all my PRs, all my formers, because they all left me. I wish we could get all them people. I wish you could go back to when I worked in the gym and the swimming pool. and I've been around women my whole life, right? I've not ever no complaint. But then some people will say, just because you haven't had any complaints doesn't mean it's not true. Because it could be that the women, people are scared to come forward or they're... Because they're, I'm, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, mm, so people yeah. will say, like, because even I would say that, I, you know, it doesn't mean because no one's ever come forward before that. It's, it's not true. That's a, that's a valid point. So, so for me, it's more... But then how do you... That's a valid point. And I, I, and I hear that and I accept it. But then how do you combat stuff like this? Because actually, you know, for me, that means everything. So I, what, I still speak to all my ex-girlfriends. So what do you think the, the process should be? Because for me, I, th I understand why we've got to this point in society where whatever a woman says, we have to believe it, end of. Because historically, we've not been taken seriously yep. when we've reported crimes of sexual assault, rape, whatever. It's, the percentage is extremely low. Yep. So I understand why we've got to this point. My worry is, is that I think that there's not enough procedures around it. So in your in your in this situation, what would what do you think is the correct procedure? In this situation, the correct procedure would have been to go to the police. So this is another thing, right? What do you want me to say? so what this is another thing that people I yeah. that when I've done my research and whatnot. Yeah. There's never been any you've never been uh, pulled in for questioning. No. Nothing. No. You've never been um, charged with no. anything. They've never even said... We'd come down for a cup of tea. No. Come down for nothing. No. None of these. No. Also, none of these allegations that were put into The Guardian, none of these women have gone to formally no. uh, report any no. of these things. No. Um, and since this has all come out, I know they've kind of worded it as you've been acquitted or the it's been dropped. Dropped due to but, like a... But... It That's would, not true. For it to be dropped, it would have had to have been picked up and it was never picked it was up never in the picked first up. place. So for me, that is what I find quite worrying. It's odd. Is that all of these things can happen, like they can come forward and again, I'm not saying they're lying or they're not, but where is the process to make sure that... Well, ask me this question. I just saw, excuse me, I don't know when you're putting this out, but I just saw that... At the end, of beginning of March, a big soap, big soap star says it. Big soap star was arrested for rape. Mm -hmm. Big soap star. It says top soap star. I read it all last night. Pure articles. Top soap star arrested for rape. Male in their twenties raped someone on New Year's or around New Year's. They ain't being named. 
So do you think Why have they not been named? So do you think it's... They were arrested. Arrested know. for rape. It's all in the papers. Anyone who's watching this can go Google it. Soap star arrested for rape. Why have they not been named? I was... My name, my name was dragged. I've not even been spoken to by the police. So, I, by, from my understanding, you have gone to the police. Yeah. So, okay. to answer your last question, the process for me would either be go to the police, mm -hmm. go to Time's Up, because that's what Time's Up are there for. If you thought to yourself, it's not a police thing, that's what Time's Up's there for. That's what it was built for. The Me Too era in 2017 was, was, was long overdue, well-deserved for women. This is not me saying this. This is stuff I believed anyway. Mm -hmm. People don't know me, mm -hmm. right? Um, my name was not mentioned once in that era. So the process is go to the police, right? If you don't believe that it's criminal, go to Time's Up, right? Go to my, go to my agents, go to my PR. Well, there's many, there's there was, many. There was, one of the ladies did say that she spoke to your PR. The... And the PR said she was lying. Okay. And I know, and she was lying because she's a liar, but that's a different story. Um, but there's, my point is to your question, there's a process. There's a process. And you can go to those people and you don't have to be named. What you don't do is wait till a man gets nominated for a career achievement and go to a newspaper. So what do you, what, what do you think um, is the reason behind this? Who was to you? Someone that uh, collaborated with us for and a few years. And you worked with her a lot? Yeah, she collaborated with us for a few years. Yeah. So would you say she was, you were close to, and you were friends? Would you yeah. say she, you were yeah. friends? Yeah. So she she's like around one of, my children and everything. So she was like one of she's a pivotal point in the Guardian article. What would be the reason why <laughs> would now decide I don't like no after being around your family, your kids and whatnot, and say I don't like this man and I'm gonna make up all these things against him and throw him underneath the bus? Well, I can't really talk. I can't really, as you know, there's there's legal things going on. And to, to your point, not me getting looked at, but me trying to sue uh, a newspaper and the fact that I went to the police, there's stuff happening there. So I, I don't really want to talk ab about her like that. Um, but all, but all... I, what, what I will say is I'll go back to your point about what I will say is sometimes you fall out with people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can be close with people, you can be tight with them and then you fall out. That's, that's, that can happen in life. And sometimes that happens in life. And then when that does happen, either people don't chat again, or they do chat, or sometimes there's a bunch of people that don't like you, and you keep succeeding, and then there's opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do, do you know what I mean? Like, I, there's certain things I can't, I can't say, obviously, but, but, and as I said, as I said earlier, not everything is, not everything is a lie. There's context to some so, things. So what's not a lie? So, for example, there was a woman that said that at work I told her her bum was nice. Right. I did. And do you feel that is wrong to do that? In, in 2023, <laughs> in 2023, in the way the world has changed, of course, in 2016, it may have been wrong. But at, at the time, it was just, it, it, I, didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I was like, yo. It was just like, oh, man, you got a nut, you know what I mean? And when, and when you said this to her, what was her response? She told me off. And then what did you do? Apologised. Okay. So... Apologised. I, I, I have to... This is your, what you're telling me. This is a conversation again, and this is the reason why I wanted to do this interview. It's in the article. It says I apologise. Because she said I, I apologise. And I think... So, like, why are you in the paper? Right. So this is my... Con my another why I wanted to have this conversation, because I think there has to be a conversation around harassment. Mm -hmm. And the word harassment, what, like, to you as a man in 20, like, in 2023, what does harassment mean to you? Well, I've, I've looked up the definition now, and if, if I look, if I stare at you too long now, that's harassment, right? right? But for me, you, I, I think it's not about the word harassment. I think we have to look at intent. I think we have to look at kind of the people that are kind of going, yo, 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 yo. And the people that might just say an odd comment and not understand their actions have a harm, not understand that their actions harm people. Because when I said that, I wasn't like, Rah. I was saying, whoa, she's got a nice bum. So I said that and she told me off and I was like, I'm so sorry. Right. And then you have to check yourself and go, oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said that. But that, that does not make you a sexual predator. Do you know what I'm saying? Me, me telling someone off for... Because... I think, I was trying to find my words, be careful here because I'm a woman, I don't want to look like I'm 
But I would, I would say that for me, I think we have to, as a society, be a bit more, I think it's unfair to just call, say somebody is harassing you from one comment. One comment. Mm -hmm. I think, and I, I don't know how this is gonna to come out, but I think even as a woman, I think for me, I wouldn't class somebody harassing me if they made one comment. My, I would decide if somebody was harassing me after I told them I felt uncomfortable, and what they, they do after that. So 100%. if I say, well, that made me feel uncomfortable, <laughs> And then you go, what? your bum looks nice though. I'm telling you your bum looks nice. <laughs> then I would be like, yeah, you've gone too far. You're harassing me yeah. because I've told you that I don't yeah. like that. But if you say to me, sorry, I apologize, yeah. my bad. Yes, it was inappropriate. I've now told you, 100%. however you act after that is what I would decide 100%. is harassment or not. So let me tell you something, on God, yeah? On God, I've never in my life I don't give a fuck what they say, they can come. I've never in my life had a conversation with a woman where I've made a comment like that and she's told me, excuse me, and I've carried on. But then, ne never. But then some people might say, why are you even saying that in the first place? Because you know what? Well, I'm a grown adult, they're grown adults, and sometimes in, in, sometimes in environments you're in, people have those conversations. Let's not pretend people don't have those conversations. Yeah. People have those conversations. When we were, I mean, I'm older than you, but when we were growing up, everyone's heard of, whether you worked in a, in a, in a, in a business or not, everyone's heard of office work parties. Do you know what I mean? Office Christmas party. Oh, Sarah was photocopying her things on the, on the photocopier. Oh, Bob was kissing Janet in the cupboard. Oh. Everyone knows about, like, we all know about these stories, you know what I mean? Whether you worked in an office or a corporate thing or not, right? It's, adults have conversations that they sometimes shouldn't have, whether they're single, married or whatever. If the world was the way that we, that people pretend it is, there would be no affairs, there would be no uh, uh, one night stands, there would be, there would be, no, the, the world is the world. People flirt, people talk, and so, and so they should, but there needs to be lines. Right? And actually, we need to differentiate between men that don't care about the lines and men that cross the lines unintentionally. So how many times can you cross the line unintentionally? Well, it depends on who you're around. I'm not talking about grabbing people up, but like, you might be a group of, like for example, you know, saying that to that girl, she says that to me, I say, sorry, I never did it again. But then, did you, would you then think it's okay to say it to another woman, even though that woman has told you no? It depends on the conversation. If but I was I, having a conversation with another woman and she said to me, oh, boy, I like your chest or you, you, got, you, you got a nice bum, why wouldn't I say you got a nice... You, you might, you might, I can't lie to you. You might say that. Mm -hmm. you, as a human being, you might say that. But what I'm saying to you and what I, would need, what I don't need people to understand, I don't care if they understand because this is fact, is that I've never been in a conversation where I've been making uh, uh, comments like that where it was not reciprocal and not mutual. Well, if, if I'm inappropriate, they were inappropriate too. Because I've never been in that conversation. Apart from that one time? With the bum? Or did, was there Well, that wasn't really a conversation. Oh, that right. was completely my fault. Okay, cool. That was completely my fault. And I can own that. But I, I owned it back then. So then what else? Because you said the bum and then the, the comments. And then um, so what are the other things that you can say, yeah, I put my hands up, that was wrong of me? I mean, as I said, there's, there's context. It's like, I, I can't... I'll tell you one thing that I did find quite weird was the whole dick pic thing. Mm -hmm. um, when in the article you kind of said you couldn't recall mm -hmm. if you sent the dick pic. Yeah. And I'm telling you, any times I've sent anyone a little bit of a saucy pic, I know so that you, shit went out. So you send unsolicited pictures? And you if I was going to do it, I know <laughs> if that I, I was sent that, it, okay? If I was. Yeah. If I was going to send it, and I have, but also... I, I it, have, I have. But also, I probably have... And I definitely have, because I've, listen, I've sent videos, I've sent whatever, however... You sent it, videos too? Yeah, sometimes you just, anyway, let's not, this is not the time for that. But I have, I have, yeah. Okay, but that cool. person has either requested it or... Right. Right, they've right. ever requested it. So my thing with that, right. one second, when I saw that, when I saw that bit in the article, it was like, how can you not remember sending your thing to somebody? And that's what for me was very questionable because you see me, if I've done something, I'm saying straight out the gate, no, that never happened. Right. So when I read that and I was like, mm, that's a bit dodgy. How can you not know? Okay, so 
There's things I can't say, but let me tell you something. I'm going to say one thing. Do you understand, though, when you say this, when people say there's things you can't say, people are going to assume that it's because... No, it's because it, it's literally because there's, there's legal things happening. Right. But what I will say this, I've never in my life said anything that people did not want to see, ever. I put that on, I put that on anything that anybody wants. I've never sent anything that... And if, if I've ever sent anything in my life, it's been requested. So, but in the... She says that it was just... Came from nowhere. No chance. And so can you explain what that was? I can say that that whole situation was more about adults having conversations than anybody doing anything that was unsolicited. That's all I can say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never send anything under, I wouldn't do it. So you were saying it, it was the nature of the conversation, it I was... Would, I wouldn't send anything unsolicited. Okay. So, in the, in the, in the article as well, they, people referred to you as a sex addict. And they said that, you know, you're constantly, like, you went for dinner with one of the cars, she, you wanted to take her upstairs, and she said no, you was like, don't tell anyone, all these things. Mm -hmm. So, wh where, where do... Where does that come from? Not saying it's true or whatever, but where do people get that idea from? I feel like I feel like I'm a person that I do get into these conversations. Like I do get into these conversations. I don't I don't instigate them, but I don't I, I don't shy away from conversations like that. If the topic comes up, then I'm a person that will talk about it, and that that's 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 kind of who I've been. Like I don't you know what I mean? Like, but I, I wouldn't. I mean. Being a sex addict, in a, I'm not a sex addict, by the way, but being a sex addict in a crime. And do you think that's what some people at the moment is a bit di is in, is confusing? Is that people are kind of getting things mixed up that are crimes with things that are just they don't like, if that makes sense. Well, it, and 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 per your earlier comment, it's like when you are when you are a, as a person not liked, it's easy to believe a narrative that is that is put out there because it's like yeah. That makes sense because he's always a bit. Mm, I've always found him a little bit this. I've always found him a bit arrogant. I've always found him a bit. So so it's easy to believe those things. And and I, I I'm not saying I'm not that. For me, and I said this as something else. So forgive me if it's repeated. You know. For me, arrogance is a label that people put on you when they cannot deal with your confidence, right? Because if if someone's your best friend and you're as confident as you are, you're a very confident person. From what I've seen, I don't know what happens in your in your house or whatever, right? If somebody doesn't like you, they'll be quick to be like, Zizi, 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 this man, Zizi, that. But your best friend wouldn't say that. Mm. Your best friend who really got your back would be like, excuse me, she's confident. She knows what she wants. Da, 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 da. People that know me be like, this guy is on it. When I mean I'm on it, like I, I get up like 5.50, I go gym, I come back, I'm on it. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to make any friends. And this is where the coldness comes from. I'm not trying to make any friends. Nobody's better than me. Nobody's better than me. That's my opinion. And the facts are the facts. If you look at my achievement, the facts are the facts. Now, where people think that is arrogant because people think I think I'm better than people. I don't. I've never in my life thought I'm better than anybody. Like legitimately, I don't think I'm better than no one. I eat, sleep and go toilet just like everybody else is. I wake up and I go, rah man, I ain't lost enough weight or how come my pecs aren't big? Like, so I, I have the same flaws as everybody, right? I don't think I'm better than anyone. But you ain't better than me. And I project that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And so people, people don't like it. Because people have their own issues and their own confidence. And when they walk into a room like, hi, hi, and I'm happy to be there. I walk into a room like, you lucky to have me here. That's arrogant to people. But to me, it's, be it's belief. You cannot sit here and do this job and not think you want to be number one. If you don't want to be the best female podcaster, Scratch that. If you don't want to be the best, don't edit it out, but scratch that. If you don't want to be the bed, best post podcaster in this country, what are you doing it for? Mm. Why are you doing it? So you have to believe that. So, do you feel like all the things that you've accomplished and what you've done for the culture, because again, whether or not I've seen you and you're warm, or I understand what you've done and what the- You're the only one. And, and like, the, because, no, because before kidulthood, before adulthood, there was, we didn't have films no, like that. There wasn't didn't. anything like that. So do you feel, do you feel, how do you, what's your feeling towards the industry and how 
they've handled this situation with you, people that you know? Um, I, I, how, how, what, how's that been for you? I think it's disgraceful. But the, the ironic thing is, the ironic thing is this, is like, if this happened to anybody else, it would be me that would be making noise about it. They have to kill the bravest ones because it's the bravest ones that are the ones that, are the, I'm a disruptor, I'm a disruptor. Like the stuff that I achieved, I'm not supposed to, I'm, I'm not supposed to have achieved that, right? And you know, nobody else is walking on, well, maybe now, but other people weren't walking on set being like, where's the people of color? Other people weren't turning down mills because they wanted their co-star to be in the show. I've said this, people have seen this article like before. Mm. When, when we were trying to set up Bulletproof, I was told to my face by execs, one of you has to be white. If you can remove your co-star, we'll make this for you. We can make this show for you. I was told that to my face. The person that told me that now runs a studio. Can you believe that? The person that told me black people won't work. One of you has to be white. They now run a studio. I'm not gonna out them. I'm not gonna mash up their life or anything like that. But you believe that they now run a studio. So imagine the decisions they're making now, right? Mm. Black people don't sell. Anyway, I was told to remove my co-star and I'm, I said, no, there were mills on the table, ZZ, mills. Not literally, but like, I could have made that show with like Lethal Weapon. So how did it feel then when your co-star came out? And I love him, I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing him, I love him. But how did that feel though? I'm not bad mouthing him, I love the guy. It's my guy. Fair enough. Like we've been through, we've been in this business for 18 years. Like, and, and you know what I mean, so. Do you understand it? Do you understand why people have to do things? We're all I'm not, I love the guy. I'm not saying that. I'm not. Fair enough. Let's talk about um, Adam Deacon. Because I think your face, I don't know if they, they probably did. They would have like, he doesn't want to. But I feel like we have to. Adam Deacon, um, what, what is that? Because I feel like I've heard things from Adam. I've heard things. Um, no one's a, heard. No one's heard from. No, I've, yeah, I've not heard. But I've heard things. Maybe you know around the thing. You can read articles. You can see that there's been restraining orders and all those type of things. What What is that with Adam Deacon? Because obviously you guys worked together. You were close at one point. Um, what What happened there? And do you feel like? He there's he has a part to maybe play in. Do I feel? Yeah, like do you do you, is there you know? <laughs> I don't feel. Um, let me just say this. This narrative that you've been fed, that everybody's been fed. Just for context, he's basically come out publicly f loads of times and said, you know, that you you bullied him. His whole you career, you stopped I his career him. and all yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. This narrative that, that people have been fed for the last 10 years, and I've never spoken about, ironically, I spoke about it the other day on something, so <laughs> sorry. Um, I've never spoke about is, 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 is bullshit. And the biggest mistake, two mistakes I made, the biggest two mistakes I've made probably in my life was one, not giving all the evidence of the shit he was doing to me at the trial because I didn't want him to get, I didn't want this guy to get in trouble, but he would not leave me alone. I'm gonna to get to that in a second, why? He just would not leave me alone, right? So I only gave enough evidence for them to deal with it. If I had given the evidence that he was threatening the lives of my children and that he was telling people to find my address and, and jack me and, and do more, if I'd given that all in, I mean, it's kind of there, people heard, but I didn't give it in, right? It would have been on top. Before that point, from 2003 to, 2000, to 2010, this was my guy, like, this was my guy. I looked after him, I put him in every film, I put him in every film. But where's the, bu there was no bullying. There was no bullying. In 2010, he decides he's gonna make his film. Um, gonna make his film. I was helping him with this movie. I was helping the guy with the movie. Mm -hmm. He went and signed a contract with somebody else and cut me out. That's what happened, this is fact. Right. At that point, I said to him, we had a conversation, we kind of fell out a bit, but we had a conversation and he said, bro, I got to eat, man. You were taking too long. I said, fine, but you can't call the movie that name if it's not part of our thing, because this, this is my brand. Mm. 
Right. Cool, I'm not going to call it that. Then that's what they call it. That's why we fell out. There was no bullying. There's never been no bullying, ever. That's why we fell out. From 2011 to 2014, I didn't speak to the guy. There's no bullying. So that's from 2003 now to 2014. There's no bullying. Then one day in 2014, boom, he comes out. I blocked his career. I'm raising children. I'm running a business. I'm not out there. For sure, I said to people, he ain't working on my shit. That's my prerogative, though. Mm. If we've fallen out, why do I need to bring you onto my projects? But if you think I'm out there raising children and running a business and I'm having meetings with Zizi, like, yeah, Zizi, nice to meet you. By the way, don't work with... I was never... Do I've never done that. I've never... All I've, all I've ever wanted is for him to crack on over there. We're falling out, crack on. Do your thing. Let me do my thing over here. There's been no bullying. Can I say I've been the perfect friend? Probably not, but I'm not the perfect friend to, any, to anyone. Like, no, who's the perfect friend, right? Now, then we go to court. He gets convicted. So in court, they're like, well, where's all the evidence of the bullying? There's nothing. So he's convicted of harassment. Now, bear in mind, he was harassing me for months and I did nothing. It's only when the man threatened the lives of my children, only at that point did it escalate. Only at that point. I tried everything. I tried legal letters. He spoke to me on the phone. I told him he was in the movie. I'll put him in the next movie. I, I got him an agent. When he was doing all this madness to me, I went and got him an agent. So how am I this wicked guy? He's doing all this madness to me. I went and I got him an agent. Mm -hmm. That agent stuck with him. Came to, came, that agent came to court with him against me. The same agent that I got him. But that's the point. This is his, his client, right? Now... This is where you don't, this is what you don't know. He's convicted of harassment, boom, boom. Restraining order, two years. From 2015 to 2017, peace. Right. After the thing runs out, he starts again. Now, this is what people don't know. He starts again, and it continues, and it continues, and it continues. He's doing, he's telling people to come find me. Jack Noel, do this, do that. But I don't say anything. I've got emails from the police 2019, 2020, 2020. But they're like, we'll go get him now. Mm -hmm. I've got the emails. And I'm saying to them, just leave him. I don't want you to go get him because I understand he has some mental health. Everyone talks about how Noel doesn't care about his mental health. I care more than anyone. Because if he had real friends that cared, he, they wouldn't have let him do it. My friends wouldn't have let me carry on like that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so anyone who's thinking that I don't care, I've had to endure this shit with my family, this torment, and I'm going to tell you more, I'm going to, I've had to endure this torment with my family because I did care. Even after everything he did, I cared enough that I didn't want him to get nicked. So I could show you the emails now. I could get my laptop and show you the email now. Police, 2020, we'll go get him today. And me telling them, no, don't go get him. I just need to make you aware of what's happening. When he got kicked off Instagram, blames me again. Of course he got reported because he was doing all kinds of madness. And I'm not talking like minimal madness where you're just like, I'm talking about people telling him to fuck my wife and he's retweeting that shit. Bang his wife and put the rubber in the fish tank. And he's retweeting that. Then he's screenshotting it and putting it on Instagram as well. So it's going to hundreds of thousands of people. That's why Instagram banned him. It wasn't a case of me report. Like he got, people reported him. Where's this pussy hiding? Excuse my language. Where's this pussy hiding? People are telling him, yeah, up in between his mum's legs. He's retweeting this stuff. This isn't 24, this is 2020. This is 2019, 2020. You lot don't know about this because I've endured it. So who's bullying who? So, no. When this thing started happening, in 2021, certain people started rearing their head again and tweeting things and messaging things like, nobody's bulletproof, nobody's unstoppable. One of those messages went out at 12 p.m. on the day I got the call, and I got called at 10 past 12. I don't give a fuck what anyone, like, I don't feel people were involved, I know people were involved. Before I go to how all of this has affected you, another one- I've I, endured this shit, I don't I, want I, people I, to know, like, I, I've never before... spoken, I've endured this to protect him. All the shit he's done, and the whole time, if I'm honest with you, right, and, Sorry, sorry. There's going to be people that are saying, man, no, I was lying. That everything I'm telling you is fact. Mm. My laptop is right there. I could, get, I could get my laptop and I could show you every receipt for the last 10 years. I have a document which is called 10 Years of Torment. 
and the police have Should it. Get your laptop? But you don't want me to get that thing. I can I get mean, it right now. We can get the laptop. I don't want to do that. I won't. I won't do that. I've said enough. Okay. Like m the whole point of me saying this is this, right? The point of me saying, and that's not me backing out. I've got it. The whole point of me saying this is this. I've let this narrative go for ten years because I've always thought to myself. Crack on, the guy's got his issues as well. I don't want to exasperate that. I thought that it would sort of die down and it hasn't died down. My missus has had to go through this. My, ki my kids know three things. The boogeyman, Satan, and my guy. That's the three things you got to stay away from. No. I, don't put, I don't put pictures of my kids. You won't find pictures of my kids on Instagram because of him. So you, you just mentioned your wife, your kids. What has this time been like for you and your family because um, I believe that you mentioned in an article one time after all of this has happened you was, had suicidal thoughts, you didn't want to be here. What has your mental state been like in the last two years? Because if I'm correct, um, you know you're no longer you, unstoppable. They, Gone. They, they took that yeah, from took you. It. Yeah, took it. Kicked us out, took, took the company. I got cancelled. I got, I got kicked off shows I created. So also, don't Jason, worry. I'll let you know when the shows are coming out. Jason, they'll, they'll tell Jason you also got t had mm -hmm. to. So so not only have you been affected, your business partner has also been affected. What has that been like for you in the past two years? Because when we spoke, you said you haven't worked nothing. No, nothing. So what what's that been like? Horrible. I I, I horrible because, you know. Also, these shows went down. These shows went down. So you're they, talking. They also took. Which I Council Bulletproof, really... they took Viewpoint, oh, Council Viewpoint was going to go into another season. We'd already started talking about it. So Viewpoint, Bulletproof, they can't, like about what I thought was, I, I 300 kind of jobs, 300 jobs on each show. I kind of, un I understand when they don't continue, but what I thought was really weird is that they took the remaining episodes off of, the air, off the air, which I thought was because. So you've got to be going to jail for 100 years. If, if they've done, if they all believe, right, this guy, we're going to, he's so this, we're taking the thing off the air. You better be going to jail for 100 years. But then you're not getting spoken to. So how did you? What did it's you, been it's been horrible. What did you What did you do? How have you managed to like? Obviously, because you're still here. How did you manage to come? How did what What did you do? Was it your family, therapy? What What How did you? Well, like we say, thoughts. I don't want to diminish anybody that has these sorts of thoughts, right? I wasn't thoughts. I'm like I'm I'm out of here. I would I knew the day. I was like, we went, we went away, I'm out of here. And it was one of my kids that said something on a day that made me just sort of snap out of it. And then I've had, to, I've had very few people support, more than people would think, but very few people. And even the people that support me, even like the person that was here today, he don't want people to know he's here. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Not because he ain't, he supported me for the last two years, but mm. if I said, oh, it was so-and-so, someone will probably blast him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's been, there's been people, but it's been, it's been minimal, but it's been horrible. Like for the first six months, it was probably like, stay alive. I was having therapy every day. They were calling me every day just to make sure that I was like there. And now, now it's like probably bi-weekly once a week. And I don't want anyone to sit there and think I didn't take into account what was said about me, right? I know what's not true. I know what's out of context and I, and I stand on that and I'm going to stand on that, right? I'm telling you, because it would be easier for me to just go, but it's easy, please, just, uh, please. It'd be easier for me to do that. I'm not doing it, right? That's who I am. But don't think I didn't he hear it and see it and think, wow. Did you ever make someone feel certain ways because you talk quite harsh or when you made that joke and they laughed, did they laugh because they thought they had to laugh? Like I've analysed every inter... And there's days I sat there like catatonic, like analysing every interaction I've had with a woman in my whole life, with people in my whole life. Do you know what I mean? Like you just, you just, you know, I, my kids must have thought I was zombified because I'm just sitting there like that, thinking about, I'm going through my whole life. Well, yeah, when I was 15, I met this person and I, I, I went, I almost went mad. How hard, was it for, how hard was it for your wife? Because I don't want to speak for her because we're in 2023. I don't speak for women. Do you know what I mean? I know, but you, you're, you, you can, you, it, although you're not speaking for her, you're in the same house as your wife. That's someone that you've been with for, it was terrible. for, for, for how many years? It was and terrible. she knows you. For, well, that's the key point. She's known you for how many years? She knows me. Right. 
My wife ain't no beaten. My wife runs her own. My wife ain't no beaten woman or we don't even have, it's difficult. Like I've never, we don't even have route. Like we don't even have rouse. I ain't sitting here saying I'm the perfect father, husband, son, friend or anything like that. But I'm saying like we, like it's, it's she knows me. She knows me. So when she reads that and it's like, he said this, she like, well, yeah, I can see you saying that. I'm like, well, yeah, I can. She said to me something the other day. She's like, what people don't know about you is like, you're the same with me as without, as when I'm not there. Because that was one thing that I did say to you. I was like, so you make these, you made you say, no, I made this comment, but a lot of people will say, and even me, cause I'm very territorial. I don't want my man to any, no other woman that their bum looks nice. Yeah. So as a, again, as a married man, do you think that's okay to be telling another woman while you're married that she's Well, the nice? parameters of my marriage are my business, right? right but yeah. what I will say is like, I've been out with my missus, mm -hmm. you know, where we can see someone, I'll be like, hey, that girl's got a nice bum. She goes, yeah, me, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Or she's like, oh, that guy's, that guy's, that guy's attractive. And I'm like, which one? This brother here, let me just get, no, joke. <laughs> but do you know, but, so my point is, is like, context. And this is what she said to me the other day. What people don't know about you is you're, the, you're pretty much the same with me as without me. Obviously, if I'm with my mates, I might, I might say a thing that I might not say if she's there, I'm right, with right, my right. mates. Of course, like, but, and that doesn't make it right or wrong or, you know, maybe you think, oh, I shouldn't. But I'm pretty much, I will be out with her and we'll see someone and, you know, a jogger run past and she'll be like, you see her boobs? I'll be like, yeah. It's not like we're out there praying right, right, on right. people mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. It's just like we're adults. See someone that we that she appreciates or I appreciate or or, or whatever. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not like, yeah, I saw them and I'm following the woman down the, in the bushes and trying to grope her up and all this stuff. So this stuff hit me because, if I'm honest with you, to your point when you started the thing, being looking the way I do and being where I'm from because class is a factor as well. Yeah, being where I'm from and looking the way I do, I thought I was flying straight. Because I know that they're after us. Right. I know that there's any opportunity to bring someone like me or you or like to, to knock us off our, our pedestal. I know that I've always known that that was a, uh, a thing that happens. Right. Excuse me. Especially when you look like, I've always known that. I thought I was flying straight. This which is the ironic thing. Which I think is, if I'm looking at it as well, I'm like, that doesn't mean I was perfect. No, but this is what but I'm I saying. Thought I was as, also, if I look at things, I as how I know Sorry, we are ahead. as, like you we're saying, as black people, we see we, uh, the black men are nine times likely more likely to be stopped by, by the police. We know that in the in the system, um, you are judged more harshly than your more white harshly? counterpart. 100%. So my thing, if I was looking at this as someone from the outside, as I am, my thing is, as a black man, in the in the system that we are, for me, it's very interesting that you've not been arrested. Right. Because with all the information here, I would at least expect that the police would have been like, hi, no, come, can we have a quick word with come, you, please? Come, let's have a chat. As a, especially as a black man. Right. Class, like you're saying. So what does that tell and you? Whatever, I mean. What does that tell you? It's interesting. That's what I think it tells me. So what I was saying, again, back to that, it is interesting, but was like, I thought I was, <laughs> I know what people have seen, I know what people have read. I, and again, this is probably the warmest anyone's ever seen me because I, I am detached and I am quite like stand, I've always been like that, right? But I thought I was flying straight. And what I mean by that is I never thought I was perfect and I'm not perfect because even Christians and God-fearing people do things that everyone, their friends are like, yeah? Christian, mm -hmm. yeah? Right, so I don't drink. I don't take no drugs. I don't even smoke weed. I don't, I don't go out and party. I'm not out there like grabbing up batteries. I never did any of that. I went to work. We talk about what it done to me. Work was my life. I went to work, I busted my ass, I came home. Spent time with my kids. I went to work, I busted my ass, I came home. That's generally all I did. That's why I challenge you at events and all that because you might be right, but I barely went out. I barely went out. I wasn't really doing this stuff. So yeah. I'm imperfect, I've made mistakes, I might have said this, that, there, I might have spoke to someone harsh. That don't make you a bully, doesn't make you a sexual predator, doesn't make you an abuser, makes you a human being. Makes you a human being, because everyone makes mistakes and everyone, you know what I mean? But you get, you get judged more harshly. I genuinely, the things I've seen, the things I've seen, make me know 
that I was flying straight <laughs> because I've seen people not fly straight. Right. Out of this business and in this business. One thing. But I... they wanted to make me the scapegoat. Um, another thing, another bit in the article, which yes. I think people want to hear an explanation for how this happened, was the you recording some, or, or allegedly recording, yeah. um, I believe it was... An audition. An, an audition. Yeah. Um, you, for a film that you had, you was uh, producing, yeah. A, yeah. A, a directing, and you did an audition, and there was a nude scene, and you allegedly... No, I recorded, recorded allegedly recorded the audition, and I've been showing it to, to everybody. To people. So what is, what's that about? I didn't record no audition, and there's no, there's no video. What does the casting director say in the article? That that didn't happen. Sorry? The casting director in the Guardian article says that didn't happen. And she said she was also next to me in the room. Right. Okay. So then how did <laughs> know what she looks like? Or what she looks like undressed? I, I can't comment on, on that right now. But then you... But I can't. I can't. It's, it's legal stuff. I can't talk about it. But you're saying that's not... There was no video. There's no video. It wasn't recorded. But what does the casting director say? Who was next to me? No, I understand what that is saying. What does the casting director? No, I understand. Was... Oh, we've said it that she, she said that this is not what's happened. But then obviously, she, someone else has been able to describe an, what another woman looks like. Mm -hmm. So then that's where the confusion, I guess, is happening. Like, well, then if it wasn't recorded, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. You can't I understand speak that. on no, this now. No, I can't now. speak on that right now. Okay, fair enough. Um, one thing I did actually want to speak, ask you about was um, BAFTA, because I've seen that you're dropping the case against BAFTA. What's that about? Yeah, I did that because, you know, they, they just essentially, they reacted to the article. The article is the, is the main, is, is the cause of everything. Okay. So that article, everything that happened in my life, in my career, in my world, and everything it stems from that article. So for me, there was, there was no point in, in, in going after everyone else when actually that was the... That was the main, source. the main source, yeah. What do you think is the best way for men to move forward in this current uh, climate that we're in, where you can't, where, yeah, if, if a woman feels like you was inappropriate, you was inappropriate, rightly so, that's her prerogative. Apologise, yeah, you should um, apologise. But how would you say men should be moving? Because I do, again, think Don't speak a, to no women. I do feel like there is a... Convers that is a conversation also to be had because I have spoken to a lot of men that say, and this is not oh get the violins out for men or anything no, like that. Not. But I have spoken to a lot of men that have said they don't know how to approach women anymore. They're scared to approach women. They don't even know Listen, what they should say to women. Men, men, and I and I and I and I know this. And again, it goes back to the reason I thought I was flying straight is because I see other men. Men are the problem, Gen right. generally. Okay. Right. If there's a scale of like a hundred percent, the female problem, the problems are like ten. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ten percent. Because there's women that are a problem too. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred. Right? Hundred. Definitely. Yeah. But it's probably like ten percent. Right. So ninety percent of the problem is 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 men and the way we move. But there has to be an allowance for change. Right. Okay. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying that people should be like glossed over the behaviour, but you can't suddenly one day wake up and be like, you said that. You have to be mashed up. It's like the generation before was doing a madness. It's one generation. It's the fathers and people. Like, you have to, there has to be an allowance for, there has to be education. There has to be time for education. There has to be time for knowledge. There has to be time, there has to be an allowance for people to understand, right? Because actually, there are still people that have those views that are still alive. 50, 60, still alive, True. right? They're still the fathers of these guys that have teens and 20s and all that. So there has to be an allowance for change. The, the punishments and stuff shouldn't be like so hammered down where kids are getting booted out of school and this, that and the other. I mean, if they're cross, if they're, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if there's yeah, a line, yeah. obviously, but like if, you know, if it's, it's stuff being said, you need to be educated. Why is it they can do it with everything else? When people cover up their racism, unconscious bias, when well, we're doing an unconscious bias course. So why can't there be courses for, for this, this sort of stuff? Why shouldn't, why, why can't it be mandatory for everybody who gets a job to go on a unconscious bias and unconscious sexism or uh, eradicate misogyny course? Why can't that happen? Don't tell me there's no money because they find money for, for all kinds of nonsense. Like 
it, employers can do that. Mm. That should be mandatory for everyone. Do you know what I mean? They, these sorts of things should happen. Because I do agree there's a lot of unlearning that we have there's to do. And especially also, if we're being frank, within our own culture, like we're black not... culture, carnival, all these type of things. Even like when you, we were growing up, I've said this before, carnival? like... Carnival? What? Carnival, all these type of things. Even just like growing up when how a man should approach you in the street. Yo, come here. And you'd be like, what do you mean, girl? I'm coming over here. And it was like, no, come here. It was all part of... I'm in my 40s. That's, of... how you that's how you approach girls when I was young. There was, right. no, there was no apps. If I saw you at a bus stop, I wasn't like, right, that girl's at the bus stop. She said, let me go on and see if she's on bu No, no, she's not on Hitch. She ain't on Bumble. She ain't on Tinder. Like, if mm. I saw, I'd be like, yo, what are you saying? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? And you would either go and go about your business or you'd be like, yeah, I'm good. But that's how you met people when I was growing up. Mm. That's how you met people when I was growing up. So suddenly, I have to just unlearn that. I mean, I'm not saying I'm out there doing that, obviously. I, but right. my point is, is like, suddenly you have to unlearn that like, it, these things take a bit of time. And I think what the, where the world is now, it's just like, this is how it is from today. And anyone who doesn't change today is getting dragged and so destroyed. So how would you have liked to be dealt with? These women, they're allowed to come forward. They're allowed to say how they feel. They've, they've, that, they've that's done their, it. That's their truth. How would you have liked to have been dealt with in this whole situation? What, what do you think? That's not my, that's no, not my, that's like, not my choice, is it? They, well, no, they, it kind of like... They did what they did, it's done. Yeah, but we're talking about there being a process. So I don't... The process is that women should be able to come forward and tell their version of whatever they think their truth is. But then my thing is, what then happen? What is the process? There should be a process. in. So in, in, your, in your world, when these women came forward, what would your... Because no, it can't be, oh, they're just wrong. Nothing should have happened. It, there needs to be like a process. So what would you say, in your ideal world, what would have been the process for you in this? The, the women come forward, then what would have been the next step? Is it that... I, I think, as I said, I think we, we were talking about earlier, I said that... But it, should you if be, not, as if, in like... Because although it goes to the police... Or, or not, if they... Or, or, if or whatever. What would happen to are, you, though, in that time? Do you get suspended? Yeah, and that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, what happens to the man in that yes, time if, while the woman is, if there's while an, is if there's enough, is there, If there's enough in there, sure. Suspend, you get suspended. It gets looked into, right? All, all this stuff where it's, like, anonymous stuff. Like, you have to kind of be able... You have to be able to defend yourself. Hmm. So if someone... You know, I'm, I'm getting things like... You did this on this day. Uh, no, no, you did this. When did I do that? We can't tell you. What, what, what job was it on? We can't tell you. Uh, what year was it? We can't tell you, but we know you did it. So, so, hold on. So you're telling me I've done something, but you can't tell me when, where, who, why, what job, what year. Right. I'm supposed to be able to just say, I'm supposed to defend that because... I want to say, well, I never did that because I know I didn't. But actually, if I know, I can provide some context. Oh, uh, Rapunzel. Oh, Rapunzel. Well, yeah, Rapunzel. Well, the day that I touched her foot, I fell down and I was getting... Whatever. I'm talking nonsense. But do you understand what I'm saying? You can't just be like, Zizi, you done this. You done this. When, where, where, we can't tell you anything, but we know you did it. That's just not, that's not acceptable. That's just not acceptable. So the process needs to be, they can go to those places, time's up, whatever. Legal people can be involved so that you have to sign a thing, like you ain't talking to no one, you're not going to try and intimidate, but you have to be given a fair chance to defend yourself. I don't feel like just going, or go to the police. If somebody's done all this madness, go to the police. Because it, honestly, if I read that stuff about me, I would think that, well, that person has to get, do you know what I mean? But I know me. My friends know me, my wife, I know me. Like, I would never sit here and say, I'm warm, I'm likeable, um, I'm perfect. I am not any of those things. But, but when I it don't... comes to, when it comes to breaking the law, when it comes to women, you don't believe you've done any no. of nothing? No, no, no. If I broke the law, I, then... The thing is about it, right, at least... I understand where the fear is for women, right? Mm. Especially the way the police are now with all their own shit. Mm. But again, that's an example of the people that are there for protect us. 90% of them are protecting us, but there's 10% that are imperfect. But they're getting drapes, right? I understand that. But if you truly believe I've done that, at least go forward. You can genuinely say afterwards, well, I stand by what I said 
even though they dropped it due to lack of evidence, I stand by what I said, but I believed it enough that I went there anyway. So... But nobody went. How do you... Have you spoken to any of these No, people? I would never do that. What, to be called, to be saying that I'm trying to... Right. Intimidate But in the, you people. know, like, in the time period of, like, oh, they said this happened... You know when they said, like, oh, this happened on... Say they said it happened on July the 13th. But then after these, did you have communication? Like, as, oh, in, as yes. in, like, that's what I mean. Like, yes. so, so what, did you ever get a gauge? Like, oh, I've overstepped the mark Never. with this person. Never. But, but some people might be like, oh, because, you know, like, they, people are scared of their predators. People, so. Excuse me. As in, no, I'm saying, this is what people <laughs> say. Yeah. As in, like, yeah. it doesn't matter that they spoke to you after because yeah. there's been countless cases. People yeah. go back to their person that have done. Yeah. So, but for you, did you ever get any sort of, like, oh, this is how she feels towards me. I've done... No. No, there's people I fell out with, for sure. And maybe sometimes you didn't know why they were moving funny. Maybe it's that. Right. Maybe, maybe sometimes I fell out with someone or they fell out with me and I'm just like, Tch, and I didn't know it was, oh, they think he said this or he did say that. But no, no. I, 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 and I don't want to say too much, but some people said that they... that X happened in 2017 and they were vexed. And I'm got, I got messages until 2021. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it, I was, ba when I read the thing, I was baffled. Like, genuinely, and then I can sit there and go, fell out with that person, fell out with that person, fell out with that person, fell out with that person. They're all friends. I can, I can see the code in the matrix, but of course nobody else is gonna see that because nobody else knows the situations. But like, again, it's not me sitting here being like, there's a halo over my head, Zizi. Why has this happened? Like, I have to look at myself and be like, yo. And I think that's important. I think that's, again, like I keep saying why I wanted to do this interview because it's not about, like I'm saying, whether or not you've got a halo above your head if you're this really nice person. I think sometimes in society, we need to learn how to differentiate between not Wicked liking people. a person yeah, exactly. and whether the person has done something that is lawfully wrong or if they've done something that you might not disagree with but might you might agree with or disagree with but my worry is like i said at the beginning is that this whole kind of era of being tried by social media like it goes out what if however social media reacts however the public that's reacts it. that's it that's done it. finished and for me um i've got brothers i've got I've got, da I've got a dad, I've got little brothers, I've got male friends that I, I'm very close to, that mm. I like brothers, that I like family. Also, I've got, again, like I said, it's not even a man or a woman. I've got, there's women yeah. that, you know, that it could, ha it could happen to me. It could, it, could happen happen to, it could happen to anybody. If you've ever so, told people off for being late or this, that and the other. It's all kind of like, for me, it's just like, I think there needs to be an open conversation about this. And I think a lot of people, even me, but when I, before I was, came to do this interview, it's it's scary. It's a bit weird because it's like, as a woman, do I do I do this interview? If mm. I do it, am I now condoning enemy, him yeah, or course, am yeah. I now saying? But for me, I've always been. When I started this show, it was always about having uncomfortable conversations mm. and kind of giving people the space to tell their to tell their side or whatever. Whether I agree with them or not is not nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. I'm letting people make their own decision um, for themselves. For you. What would be, how do you feel now? What would, what do you want people to kind of take from this, if anything? Or how do you want people to kind of see you moving forward? People are going to, what, what I've realised, um, if I'm honest, is people are going to see you how they see you. That, that's one thing I, I can say that I've realised. You know, I, I know when you don't look like me, whatever, you can cry on this morning and say, I worked on myself, I went to the Priory for two weeks and everyone's like, oh. But yet here I am two years later, and I do therapy all the time. It's been the, the best thing, the best thing in my life, like, <laughs> except my family. Because I learned so much about myself. I learned why I am like that. I learned why I'm like that, do you know what I mean? From, from experiences from when I was growing up. It's helped me understand why I move how I move. It's made me understand why when people wrong me, I just cut them off. There's no, like... There's no like, all right, let's chat next week. I'm, I'm gone. But therapy helped me understand and learn all of those things. So don't, no one told me I'm not working on myself or that I shouldn't be given a second chance. And I, I, I do that because I don't think there should be a second chance. This should never have happened in the first place. And if it was going to happen, it should have been done properly. It should have been done the proper way. Like go to the, it should have been done properly, not just some public dragging. But 
How people see me is how they're going to see me. I can't control that. That's one thing I've learned. I cannot control that. I know who I am. I know who I've always been. I know what I've done for the scene. I know what I've done for the culture. I know what I've done for people that look like us. Whether people like it or know it or want to admit it or give me my flowers or not, I know what I've done. There's people out there directing and writing and having production companies and don't even realise that if I didn't set the pace, they wouldn't even be doing that. Are you... Are you angry still? No. I mean, there's, in the conversation, there might have been flashes, but... Yeah, but, no, I mean, just not even today. Like, in, like how no. do you feel? Do you, how, like, what's your emotion now? No, I, what's the point? There's, there's no point. Like, I've, be, I've been angry for... I was angry for a long time, and I'm not... I'm not angry anymore. Even with, even with my man that we talked about, like, I forgive him. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. But what, the only reason I even speak... Because I've not spoken about it for 10 years. The only reason I speak about it is because... The narrative has been built up for so long that that's now the narrative. Right. People genuinely believe that what he's saying is real. And it's like, it's never been real. I've just never spoke about it because I just was like, just leave him alone. Like, I'm not, I'm not angry. Like, there's no point in being angry. That, that achieves nothing. So what do you hope, <clears throat> what's the, what do you hope will happen now? Do you think they, people, we, do you think you can come back? That's not up to me. That's up to... That's up to people watching. That's up to people in the industry going, wait a second, why did we actually do that? Do you know what I mean? That's up to, that's, 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 that's beyond my control. Because <laughs> the difficulty is, is like, everybody knows I was sort of like the, uh, I was sort of like the rebel anyway. Right. So I did it without these people opening the doors. And I got in myself. Now they've slammed the doors. So now to get back in, they have to open the doors. Also to, to note as well, there have been quite a few like women that you've worked with and pub, public women that have come out and said, I, we don't believe that, we've worked with no... There's been like, a few, yeah. Quite a, there's been, and even you, you, your production company, you've worked with women and there's your, right. I know we're wrapping up, but yeah. in my production company, we had four, four members of staff that were there the whole time. And then we had, there was a lawyer, a book scout, and a, and a headhunter, right? So seven women total in my production company. Me and my business partner, and seven women total. They weren't even called in the investigation. No one even called them. What kind of investigation is this? Mm. Some of them worked with me for five years. If you're investigating someone, surely you've got to call these people because they will know him more than anyone. And you can't say, but they wouldn't turn. They're precisely the people that turn when these things happen. They weren't even called. They weren't even called. Like, I know, I know who I am. Like, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not discrediting these people. That have, they've said what they've said, right? I've been public enemy, whipping boy, scapegoat, any name you wanted to call me for two years, right? Saying, all right, cool, do your thing. I'm there trying to raise my kids and just be a good dad. Do your thing. Two years. Everyone's had two years. Don't come out now and run your mouth. Everyone's had two years and I ain't said nothing. Mm. Now I'm talking. Let me talk, innit? Like what? You know? Do you have anything else you want to say? No. Nothing really. I don't... I'm kind of like, uh, I appreciate your time. I th I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we've done this and I'm glad that I've done it as a, to my, a note to myself <laughs> because... Uh, no, because it is. It's like in like in the current climate that we're in. Any anyone's like, oh, look what you've done. No, do you know what I mean? Question. But, go on. Am I different to how you expected me to be? Am I am I warm now? Do you understand me a bit? I I, I understand you more. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're you're definitely warmer <laughs> than I. But I think. But that. But that's. I think it's good that people understand that because people might think, oh, Zizi and Noah. Are really no. cool with each other and that's why she's there and this is why she didn't this and this never, is why she didn't say this and this never met you till, my, till like a what a week ago or basically something? yeah never so my you. my thing is um, and we ain't had no conversation we haven't since. had any conversation no. so yeah I, but again like i said i i'm very i'm able to look at things subjectively so i can understand why you probably are not come across as warm you know or why you're not because this is it's hard this industry is it hard was especially hard. i was for, in i was in the trenches and people, sorry, I know we're wrapping up. I, I was on. in the trenches. And people that don't know what you're going through just see what they see. 
So they see you come out of the other side and they think, how come this guy's doing all this? They're not even seeing the battles you're fighting. Mm. They're not seeing the wars that you're in. They're not seeing the decisions you're making, the times when you ain't got no food and everyone thinks, oh, he's balling and you're really there, you ain't balling. They don't see all that. They just see, oh, the show's greenlit. Rah, this guy. It's like, you, ain't, you didn't see the, the three years of trying to get it there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And so in terms of that, that's how I've always been. Anybody that's seen me, I don't know if any of these guys have seen me, you most likely saw me, sunglasses on, walk straight past you. I ain't got time to say hello to no one. I ain't got time to chat to people. I ain't, if you don't know me, I'm not speaking to you. That's how I moved. And that definitely <laughs> is a big factor. Like I doubt people have ever seen me smile before. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm not much. <laughs> right, I didn't know he laughs like a hyena. What's going on? <laughs> um, that's definitely a factor in, in, in how I've been and who I am. But that's just who I am. If I don't know you, how long? I mean, guys, that, that's the end of it. Um, I would say listen with open ears, as in I think it's easy sometimes we get influenced by social media, everyone else's opinion, but I, would, I want people to learn how to look at things, read things, analyse it yourself and be like, oh, okay. And don't get me wrong, I've told you the things like, the dick pic, all these other things where I'm a bit like, mm, I ain't too sure about that or that don't make no sense to me or, but does that mean now somebody should lose everything that they've built in 20 years, in 24 hours with no due diligence actually done? I don't think that's right. And I think that if we don't kind of have these conversations, I can just see it going down a very, 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 very slippery slope and that's not something I think is a good place to be as a society um, in general. So guys, you know what to do. Um, I feel a bit weird saying, I won't say the like, because that sounds like, like this one. No, it's a bit weird. <laughs> well, don't like it, I don't thing. care. But um, no, I want you guys to, I hope you guys um, took something away from this conversation. And I hope, um, yeah, I just... So your 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 people that watch man like you well, know. No, it's I mean, I, I feel like it's not just gonna be my people watching this. You know, oh yeah, it? they're gonna be watching for sure. There's gonna be a lot. Anyway, so guys, you know what to do. We out. Thank you. Thank you.